Hi, welcome back. I'm Bob from GuitarGeekWarning.com and we're singing and strumming with Doug Schmoody. And uh, I wanted to say, the first song I heard you perform was a song called Standing in Le Moyne. And it was, uh, it was one of the songs where I remember listening to the words going, wow, this is, that's a really cool song. And then you did, then you did the harmonic parts in, in it. And I'm like, oh, this dude can play too. It wasn't just somebody else just like singing and strumming. You, Thank you. Yeah, there was, there was more to it than that. And I remember thinking, I have a favorite song by a band called the Scud Mountain Boys. It's called Reservoir. Mm -hmm. And that song is about, uh, well, I assume it's about the Quabbin Re Reservoir in Massachusetts, and how they came to flood those towns. And your song is about them flooding towns in Nebraska, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would long wanted to write a song about, you know, a reservoir type song. But I think, I think two is probably <laughs> enough for that topic. So, ah, I'm sure it's not. There's, there's room. <laughs> there's room in that. <laughs> Come on. There's room in that cannon. <laughs> so the industrial revolution is not the hotbed of, of song topics as it once was. And if people can write more love songs, you can write another song about a reservoir. That, might, that might be true. <laughs> now, now that said, a lot of your songs take place in not just. You know, we're in the 21st century, and the last song you played has its roots in the Civil War. Yeah. And, and how do you marry those two ideas of living in the 21st century and having a lot of ideas that are maybe rooted a bit older? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's kind of the, a little bit the nature of, of that song and, and uh, Stanley and the Moyne song you're discussing as well. Um, it is about, both songs are about people today and how their past, you know, shapes them and shaped them. I mean, in the case of the, the previous one, the woman who's who had to, you know, still alive today, but had the Civil War ancestry in her family. And yeah. Lemoyne is about a about a guy that uh, gets to gets to go home after there's a drought in that part of the, the country. So, it, it, I try to kind of tie the two together, I guess, maybe yeah. not on purpose, but that seems to be how they, they they come out. Well, you know, certainly some of your songs, you know, every every town needs a river wider than the boulevard. Yeah. Is that directly about like Huntington Beach <laughs> and Beach Boulevard? No, because I've seen the river not. there. The river's not very wide. No, that that was not. That's about my move from Colorado to to Nashville. But uh, no, that is not about Huntington Beach. But good guess. Good guess. Thank you. <laughs> it could have been. Yeah, and so you know, thirty three and a third, and how everything sounds makes more sense to that guy at thirty three and a third. Yeah. So he's not past. even he's not even ready to to move on to CDs. He's definitely not ready for an iPad. He's not. He's no. yeah. No, that, that'd kill him. <laughs> <laughs> or five hundred gallons of gasoline. Yeah, that's that's a lot of gasoline. That's a lot of gasoline. For the record, it's only two hundred. There's two hundred. <laughs> two hundred gallons of gasoline is still a lot of gasoline. And I'm, I'm still not sure in that song if the character is using two hundred gallons of gasoline to get away from wherever she has to go, or if she used two hundred gallons of gasoline to blow up where she was. I think that's the point. It works both ways. It works both ways. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> So tell me about more about Lemoyne. So yeah. Oh, before you go though, was that a song that the so did it come out of the guitar or did it come out of the words first? Was it a words or music first? Um, I do a little bit of both, but that song for sure was the, the story first. I heard that the story about <clears throat> this again this guy that was in Nebraska and and about ten years ago there was a drought in that part of the country and. He, uh, the, this Lake McConaughey went all the way down to the lake bed, and he used to live in a town that was, that was, uh, you know, flooded by uh, when they built the, the dam on the Platte River, back in the 40s. So this was a chance for him to go home for the first time in 80 some odd years. So, heard that story and, and saw actually saw photos of, of the guy walking around, kind of yeah. giving a tour of the, the ruins of this town and this lake bed and all the dried up, caked up mud, and it just was like. I, I, I got to put this to music, so so that the idea definitely came out first, and then started putting that to, to music. Yeah, yeah. I want to play it. It's not a 1940s Martin, no. but but it's pretty close. Yeah. So this is a 1955 uh, Martin D28, and uh, I call this guitar Elvis. Uh, because Elvis also owned a 1955 D28. Interesting. That he uh, he promptly uh, he had for six or eight months, and then he sold it. So there's only 800 made. So it's it could be one in 800 chance. <laughs> so that's yeah. that's how that, it that's came better odds than Super Lotto. <laughs> 
So uh, yeah, this is this is Elvis, but uh, yeah, this is. I have to say, it's probably one of the most evenly and well balanced acoustics I think I've probably ever heard. It's just. It's it's a, it's a nice one. I, I like this one a lot. Is that rosewood? It is Brazilian rosewood. Brazilian rosewood. Nice little uh, belt buckle rash there. Somebody's obviously spent some time playing it. The king had a big belt buckle. Yeah, I think he did. See, yeah. even more evidence. I think my odds are going up. Yeah. So it's got these cool waffle back tuners. I don't know if you can see those on the camera though. Oh, waffle backs. Yep. So uh, but yeah, this is. That is beautiful. This, this is a good one. Well, when we play Lemoyne, I'll offset your 1955 with my 1940-something Adam. I have no well, idea what I love that thing. It's amazing yeah. character. Yeah. This is, this is my Kalamazoo ma mandolin. We were talking just a few minutes ago. I, when we moved, I found my receipt for buying this. I don't know if you can, can't really see it, but Daddy's Junkie Music in Nashville, New Hampshire. And I paid $149 for this 1940s mandolin. I'm still winning. I, I think you won that day. Oh, uh, yeah. I think I got it. I think it was two, 1999, 2000, somewhere around there. Yeah. Some, sometime I'll, I'll tell you about swapping guitar necks in that store. <laughs> that was a good day. So, let's do some. You want to do this too? Do All right. Give me a second to get the harmonica out. See what we can do. I'm going to ask a favor with the harmonica. Don't blow it right at these microphones. Okay. Because <laughs> that's all we'll hear. All right, I'll blow the other direction. It's important to blow the other way. <laughs> On that note, are you ready to do this song? Yes. All right.
Thank you. Nice Beautiful, job. Man. Yeah. yeah. Well, a couple parts I'm like, oh, there's a bridge. I forgot about the bridge. <laughs> yeah, me comes, too, man. <laughs> here comes the bridge. We should have prepped beforehand. Yeah. yeah. We, we rehearse when we play. That's, yeah, it. that's what it is. <laughs> so um, I have to say, like, a song like that is just so beautiful, and, and the story is so complete. I just, that, that was a song, Thank when you. I heard you play it, I was like, all right. This guy's for real. Well, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. And all the rest of your songs are crap, but that one, I like that one. I completely agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still trying to write another one that good, but, yeah. uh, you know, or that, uh, like that. But That's a great song. Thank you. And um, so when you're writing, is there certain things that you go back to? Like, what's in your well for to replenish the well? To... In terms of music or yeah. in terms of... That's too... a good question. I mean, I, I listen to all kinds of stuff, but I... Um... Is it new stuff? Is it old stuff? Where, where do you go? I, it's, it's definitely a mixture. I, I definitely one, one thing I like to go back to when I'm feeling a little bit discouraged is I, I like to go back to, to Dylan. And, and it may not be for the typical reason. It's because that, he wrote so many songs. And he just, he just gives you that, that reminder that there, there's always another keep keep going there's more right there's and, more and, and sometimes you get too attached to a song and you just can't finish it because ah, it was going to be such a great song and now it's kind of not there and and I kind of go back to you know hearing stories about Dylan when he record and somebody would just kind of rough out a take and he's like good enough let's move on and I like that there, yeah. he's got he had songs coming out of him like crazy so I, 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 I that, that kind of inspires me to just keep keep writing you know? yeah. about anything new recently that you've heard I know you're a big fan of Turnpike Troubadours, right? Yeah, I've been listening to them a lot. I, you know, I like some of the some of that vein. I like Jason Isbell and you know, Jason, that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, um, still a big Chris Knight fan. He hasn't put out a CD in a few years, but but that guy's, uh, you know, he, he's doing his own thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't think of one song he's got a bridge in, and and but I, he still <laughs> never never loses me. It's just yeah. it's it's, it's uh, he's a talented dude. So it's interesting when you. As a songwriter, you start dissecting other songs, right. and I always think like the song "Delta Dawn." Mm -hmm. You know, you familiar right. with that song? It's a chorus, it's a double verse, six choruses. <laughs> yeah. How do you do that? That was a huge hit. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a key change in there, yeah. but it, it is amazing how people can get things to work that on paper shouldn't ever work, and yeah. it's 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 kind of. On one level, it's daunting. On another level, it's inspiring. It's yeah. like, hey, <laughs> anything could work. Anything could work. <laughs> do, you, do you find yourself falling into certain songwritery type ruts or things yeah. that you're like, no, nope, this is what I did last time. I'm going to do something different. Yeah, I, I think so, for sure. I mean, there's certain kind of little devices I think I, I, I fall back on sometimes. And, and uh, like, it's always good to... What's a, what's a Doug Schmoody... Uh, I, I do a lot of the walk down stuff like I did in this song. Uh, I love to walk down to, you know, to these chords. Yeah, because yeah, you're the only one that does that. I know, but uh, I, I use it maybe more than, than I should. Stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I've been doing something new lately where I've been recording demo versions of songs. Just rough it out. Mm -hmm. And then I'm able to, to sit back and not play and listen to it. And it's like amazing what pops out. Oh, man, that, that needs to go there. That's... That, that when I'm sitting there holding yeah. the guitar and having to think about it and sing, and I don't pick up on, so that's kind of a new thing. I've been different doing approach altogether. Yeah. yeah. So I know we talked about your song "Two Hundred Gallons of Gasoline." And there's some amazing guitar work in that song. 
Will you play a little bit of that for me? Sure. Sure. I'm going to do it on this guitar here. Uh, if I can figure out how to get your capo off. Apparently we're at the Long Beach Grand Prix now. We are. And roll it back. That's the new, that's the technique. All right. You want to hear a little bit of that one? Yeah. that come from? <laughs> Wait, uh, where's the roots of that? Where, where did I, that come from? I absolutely love old first generation Delta Blues. Charlie Patton is probably one of my, my favorites. I, I love that dude. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he was... I know the name, but I've yeah, never listened to it. Precursor to Robert Johnson. and He banged on the guitar and snapped the string and did all kinds of that stuff. So that, that definitely is... Charlie Patton? Yep. You gotta yep. check him out. He's... So recordings are a bit rough. Uh, that's I think part of why he wasn't as accessible as Robert Johnson. His were were good compared to Charlie Patton. So <laughs> uh, Robert Johnson, I had a friend give me two of his records one time, and I was home alone and I put those records on, and I was spooked. <laughs> I was just scared. I'm like, I can't listen to this. This is like he is in the it's room pretty, with me. Pretty heavy stuff. Yeah. 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 So. But yeah, that's 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 where some of that comes from. I'm, I like that kind of stuff. Yeah, excellent. All right, I think we're just about at the end of our uh, end of our segment here. So our advertisers are calling. They they want to know where where their money is going. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for watching Guitar Geek Warning, and uh, I think that's about it for now. We'll see you very soon. Thank you, Doug. For yeah. thanks for having me. Yeah, DougSchmoody.net. The rattlesnake? Yeah. Where'd it go? It's a big one. There it is. Where'd it go? Damn it, I just had it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> it's a <big> Tracy rattle. <laughs> Come here, you gotta see this. <laughs> He's like, ah, that was a big, big one. Big hoss I found in the driveway or something. I don't know where oh, you go. <laughs> I hate snakes too, believe me. I'm a, I have a big snake phobia, but uh, so I kind of try not to think about it.